Hello, I'm Jeff Lindsay. Aspiration in English refers to an effect that p, t, k have on a following vowel or a following approximant, that's w, r, l, or y, where the first part of the following sound becomes voiceless or whispered. A while back, I made two videos that explain how to do aspiration in English. The first video looked at following vowels, and the second one looked at following approximants. If you haven't seen those, you might want to check them out before watching this one. Aspiration is important because it's one of the features of English that's most likely to cause misunderstandings. Because when English speakers hear unaspirated p, t, k, they can easily think that they're hearing b, d, g. For example, English speakers might hear this as bad problem. Bad problem. Bad problem. Bad problem. But in French, of course, that's no problem with an unaspirated P. Pas de problème. Pas de problème. Pas de problème. However, there are places where native speakers themselves don't aspirate, and that's what I'm turning to today. I'm focusing in this video on how aspiration is prohibited or blocked by certain preceding sounds. Let's start by listening to some English words that I've taken from a range of online dictionaries. If you're familiar with phonetic symbols, think about how you would transcribe these words. Beach. 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 Door. 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 Green. 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 Blender. 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 So these are the words you've just been listening to. Speech. 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 Store. 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 Screen. 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 Splendor. 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 Confused? Well, the first time you simply heard those words with the initial S removed. Here is the word speech. 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 This part is the final. Ch. 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 And here is the S at the beginning. Sp. Sp. So if I delete the S, the remainder should be peach, right? Wrong. It's beach. Beach. Compare this with peach. 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 Here is the aspirated P. As I explained in my first video, this aspiration sounds like whisper, as in peach. Pe pe now if we copy the aspiration and paste it into the word speech, it sounds wrong. Speech. Speech. Many non-natives who've learned about aspiration overdo it precisely by using it in words like these. Spanish. Spanish. Scouts. Scouts. Screen reader. Screen reader. It's the same with any other word of this type. Here is store. Store. Remove the S, and what's left is not tor, but door. Door. Remove the S from screen. Screen. And the remainder is green. Green. Remove the S from splendor. Splendor. And we're left with blender. Blender. Natives simply don't have aspirated p, t, k after S in the same word. You might think of it as the strong English S requiring so much breath that there isn't enough left over to aspirate a following sound in the same word. And without aspiration, what's left definitely sounds to native speakers like b, d, g. In a non-aspirating language like French, voiced consonants really are voiced, like this B. 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 But English BDG in most positions aren't fully voiced. Bad. Bad. Here all we have is the little noise of the lips separating. 
Of course, this is very different from the aspiration of English PTK. Pad. 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 But it's very similar to the unaspirated PTK of French. Ba. Ba. Pas de problème. Pas de problème. Pas de problème. The name of this UK milkshake chain is clever, because the word it's can be reduced in colloquial speech to just s, like it's wonderful, it's over there. So it's blended can become splendid, which sounds just the same as splendid. This doesn't just happen at the beginning of a word. For example, disgust sounds like disgust. There's actually a quiz on my website that tests whether you can hear the difference between real recordings of disgust with a C and disgust with a G taken from YouTube videos. The link is in the description below, but why not test yourself on a couple of examples right now? Do you think you're hearing the word with a C or the word with a G? Disgust. 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 Here's the answer. All the different approaches can be discussed. Disgust seems to blur into reverence. Now, if you got those wrong, you're in good company. So far, over a hundred people have done the quizzes on my website, native speakers of English and non-natives, and most of them also got both of those wrong. In fact, most of the time, listeners have responded pretty randomly, but even when they agree with each other, Sometimes they're all right, and sometimes they're all wrong. Basically, English just does not contrast pertoke with bedoge right after an s in the same word. And s isn't the only sound that can prohibit following aspiration. It's actually an effect of all voiceless fricatives, sometimes called fortis fricatives, though there are far fewer examples with other sounds. Listen to these speakers. D. 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 Was that the word D? No. Draft E. Draft E. Draft E. Draft E. The F there was having the same effect as an S. We get the same thing in borrowed words with sh, like shtick and Stuttgart. And by the way, German has the same phenomenon as English. Take the sh off German. Stein. And what you're left with sounds like Stein. Which I suppose makes it ironic that when they speak English, Germans are liable to overdo aspiration just like everyone else. Screen reader. Now, everything I've said so far applies inside a basic English word or morpheme. But if the preceding voiceless fricative is in a different word or morpheme, it has no effect. And we do get aspirated p, t, k. For example, Miss Piggy, plus tax, cross purposes, miscalculate. This is where I think it gets even more interesting, because if a combination of two words or morphemes is used again and again and again over time with a fixed meaning, then the division between the two parts can fade away, like two geographical areas unifying, or two bits of soap fusing into one. What were two words or morphemes can start to be pronounced as just one basic word. For example, the word discuss way back in the mists of time had a separate prefix dis, meaning apart. So discussing something comes historically from the idea of shaking it apart. But over time, the boundary faded and discuss became a single word with one meaning. And with that boundary gone, the S was able to exert its influence and make the C sound like a G, discuss. We can see the same thing with lots of historically prefixed words, like mistake and extensive experience. Non-natives are especially likely to aspirate these historically prefixed forms. Mistake. Mistake. Discuss. Discuss. Of course, this kind of historical change doesn't happen overnight, so we can find words which haven't yet fused into one for all native speakers. Take dystopia. Some speakers like me still treat this as having a boundary between dis and topia. So I say dystopia with aspirated T, 
For other speakers, the two parts are fused into one, so the S makes the written T sound more like D. Dystopia. 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 We can find pronouncing dictionaries getting quite confused with this kind of thing. Consider this word. The Cambridge English Pronouncing Dictionary shows the S fused with please, but the audio clips, British and American, are unfused with aspiration and devoiced L. Displease. Please. Displease. Please. Brits and Americans can differ on whether a two-part word has fused into one or not. Take these two numbers. Brits, like me, tend to treat these as fused single words, so I say 15, 16. But many Americans still treat the teen as a separate morpheme, with a T that's immune from the influence of the F on the end of fifth and the S on the end of six. Fifteen, teen. Fifteen, teen. Fifteen, teen. Fifteen, teen. By now, I imagine many of you are worrying about transcription. Returning to disgust and disgust, or should that be disgust and disgust, if a pair of words like these sound alike, that should be shown by giving them the same phonetic transcription, right? That's what transcription is for. So which should we use? Should we transcribe them both as SK or both as SG? And the same question applies to all the words we've been looking at, like speech and store and screen, etc. Do we use PTK? Or ga. Well, as we've heard again and again and again, these plosives sound far more like English g. And look at what the Welsh language does when it borrows words from English. Welsh has strong aspiration, and it's written more phonetically than English, and this is the way it spells these borrowings. Scarf. Scarf. Spectol. Spectol. Spaghetti. Spaghetti. Screen. Screen. If we transcribe, say, speech with a P symbol, we're telling whoever sees it that it sounds more like peach than beach, which isn't true. And using K in the C type discussed and G in the G type discussed is implying that natives can tell these two words apart, which is also apparently not true. And consider this. The whole video so far may have seemed to be about exceptions. Exceptions to the aspiration rule. In other words, situations where you don't aspirate p, t, k. But if we treat words like speech, store, splendor, screen, and all the others as containing b, d, g, well then, they aren't exceptions at all. Because b, d, g are never aspirated in English. So you might say that the only reason I've had to make this video at all is that the traditional textbooks and dictionaries have chosen the wrong symbols. In Cube, the dictionary that I co-edit, we have an option to display words with b, d, g. Now speakers of some languages, if they see clusters like sb, sd, sg in English words, can mispronounce them as zb, zd, zg. Italian, for example, pronounces S as Z before voiced consonants. Sbrigati! Come on! Sbrigati! 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 And Slavic languages, including Russian, do the same thing. Zbirbank. Zbirbank. Cube, by default, shows the usual transcription. But as I said, users have the option to see clusters like this and also the option to display aspiration where it does occur. Now, believe it or not, there's even more to say about aspiration, particularly when p, t, k are before unstressed vowels and at the end of a word. But that will have to wait for aspiration part four. In the meantime, if you found this useful or interesting, please like and subscribe and recommend it to others who may be interested. And as always, until next time, take care.